Hey everyone, it's Matt again with another video, and today we're going to show you how to calculate the ratio you need for a ratio adapter. Okay, so to get started, uh, there are two different methods you can use to calculate the ratio you need for your ratio adapter. So the first method is the easiest and the simplest. It is using a device like this. It is called a milometer. So the point of this uh, machine here, what it does is it will give, a, give you out a reading um, depending on how many rotations this cable into your transmission will receive. Now when I say that, uh, there's a little bit more to it than plug it in and it kind of throws out a number. So what you what is really important in regards to using this correctly is uh, making sure when you're actually doing the uh, the calculation or the measurement that you are actually doing that part correctly first. And what I mean by that is if you plug this in and drive however long you know you think is appropriate and then give me a number, that's not going to work. So what you have to do is remember that a gauge wants 1,000 revolutions per mile. That's a, a base standard that's just been used forever, and that's kind of still how it goes, uh, with the mechanical stuff anyway. So what happens is, when you use this device, you have to make sure that you are actually driving a measured mile. And what I mean by that is don't go by your phone because uh, they can genuinely th not uh, give you a completely accurate measurement. It can genu genuinely be off by 50 feet, I've seen. Um, so I don't call those very reliable. I would actually tell you to physically have a measured out mile and that way you'll get the best results out of this. So how it works is you'll drive, you'll drive, and as the gauge sorry, not the gauge, the transmission runs and the speedometer cable here runs, This, we, these wheels will start ticking. It's upside down, but you get the point. So it'll keep going, click, 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 and then once you reach your measure, end of your measured mile, this will give you a number. Uh, if you need absolutely nothing, this will be as close to 1,000 as possible. If it is under 1,000, what you need is an adapter that will bump it up. So one revolution in will be one point something out, or even two point something out, kind of depending on how far off it is. Um, the other one is if it's over a thousand, so let's say you have 1200, that would mean you would need something that reduces. So you would need a zero point something. It might be a 0 0.98, you know, nine, Seven, it might be a 0.75. It, it could be so many different combinations, it's unreal. That's why we like uh, using these. Um, alternatively, there's another method you can use. It's a little more laborious, a um, little more to it, but if you don't have a measured mile and don't have access to one of these, uh, there are a couple things you can do. So, uh, some of you might be familiar with these, some of you might not. These are driven gears. And what I mean by that is these are in the transmission, but are removable really easily. So when your speedometer cable is hooked up, I'm just kind of using this kind of crudely. Uh, so your speedometer cable will be in here. This will be screwed into the transmission. And this or this, kind of depending on what kind of vehicle you have, like one, one's a Ford, one's a GM here. This is the uh, GM one, I believe. This is a Ford. But... Um, these gears have a set number of teeth on them, and then they will attach onto a gear that's onto the tail shaft of the transmission, which will also have a number of, gear, number of teeth on them. Uh, so the process in which to do this calculation for what ratio you need will be the number of teeth on this gear, the driven gear, uh, whatever it may be, all right? So uh, a lot of these, are color coded. I don't go by the color coding anymore because over the years, um, 
like this says, this is a 15, no, sorry, a 16 tooth gear, right? Because it's stamped right here. Um, it's a maroon colored gear, but I have also seen these in pink, in blue, in green. So I would not go by the color at all. I've had all sorts of customers over the years go, oh, I need a, you know, a green gear. Okay, but how many teeth do you need, right? So just one thing to consider. Uh, the drive gear, the one on the transmission, it'll have X amount of teeth too. So like I said, the calculation, to do the calculation, you need four bits of information. You need the number of teeth on the driven gear, okay? You need the number of teeth on the drive gear. Now, those are a little hard to access sometimes, uh, just to count, count the teeth. And a really simple way to do that is just count the flat spots. Uh, it's more pronounced on a drive gear, uh, just because there's not going to be like 20 teeth on it. They will be six, four, five, you know, sometimes as high as 10, kind of, they're, they're going to be a very relatively small number. Uh, it also depends on the kind of vehicle you have, uh, what year uh, it is, what kind of transmission it is. Like there's all sorts of different variables. That's why we like to kind of make sure everything is as thorough as possible. Uh, the third bit of information you're going to need is the diff ratio. Now, if you're unsure of the diff ratio, uh, there are a couple of different methods to, to check that out. But almost every single time on the differential, there'll be a tag, a little metal aluminum tag somewhere on it stating what ratio it is. It's not a hard, fast rule. Sometimes people don't do that, but that's a good place to check. Um, I personally don't know how to check a diff ratio. I really should know how to do that, but it's just something I, I've never needed to learn. Now, I got this empty uh, spool here to kind of teach you about the final method. So we would also need your rolling circumference of the tire in inches. So what I mean by that is when you move the vehicle, I need to know how many inches from point A to point B one revolution of the wheel will make. Now, some people over the years have told me, oh, you don't need to do that. You can just do the measurements with the math, use pi r squared. You can take a tape measure and wrap it around the whole, whole wheel. And I go, okay, you can do that if you want. I will, I'll, I'll build you the ratio according to the information that I'm given, right? And, and that's what I do. But if you do the pi r square method, or you do the tape measure around the tire method, what's going to happen is you're going to be off. And by off, I mean you're going to be short. You are going to be not accurately measuring it because I don't care... Uh, how new the vehicle is, how accurate your tape measure is. Um, it's not going to replicate the actual real world condition of physically moving the tire. And the reason for that is there's two, two, one re two reasons, one huge reason. So the first smaller reason is the tire itself will physically shrink over time with wear. And you know this by losing tread. Now, it's a very minimal amount, but it does significantly, well, I guess not significantly, but in a minute fashion, lower the actual circumference of the tire. Is it significant? It can be, depending on how uh, significant the uh, loss in tread is. Uh, but that's not so much the major concern, because if you do that, using the tape measure or doing the pi r squared thing, uh, you'll lose, I don't know, kind of depends on the vehicle, like I said, but like, uh, <laughs> it just won't be accurate. And the, the huge, the biggest reason I, I'll just get into it is when you're physically moving the vehicle, this isn't going to like, imagine this is your tire. It's not going to stay perfectly round. As it's hitting the ground, it's going to develop a flat spot, right? And as it travels, that flat spot moves and moves and moves. And you will genuinely, over the course of one revolution, add 
half inch, three quarters of an inch, sometimes an inch entirely. And when calculating these measurements, it's telling me the inch, the inch measurement is 77 inches versus 74 or 77 and a half or what have you, even half of an inch will throw the ratio off by a couple per several percentage points. Um, instead of needing something like say a 1.2, you might genuinely need a 1.210 or something like that. Like it, it will genuinely throw off the measurement. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna be super noticeable, but there are genuine times when it is. And that's when, um, like, so I, I, I have been given numbers and it's, I'm constantly saying, oh, it's, it's good, but it's not, not enough. And I will have to do the measurements. And they tell me and I go, okay, so need to redo the wheel measurement because that's almost exclusively what the error is. Uh, and I've had numbers come back and they've been off by like two inches, an inch and a half, like, Sometimes only a half an inch, but it, it adds up. And yeah, those are just little things you need to consider when, when doing these measurements because the gauge wants 1,000 revolutions per mile. And it's, it's only as smart as what it's given. So as it's turning and running along, you know, it's gonna measure what it wants. And the biggest concern isn't so much the speed. Like it is a consideration, it is a factor. But what happens is if your uh, speed isn't calculated correctly on these old mechanical ones, uh, your odometer is not going to be accurate. It will be too fast or too slow, and that's a major point of contention when you are dealing with, say, an automotive restoration. Um, there are some automotive policies that uh, don't like you driving a certain amount of kilometers per year. There are certain times when you need to be absolutely certain of the mileage when you want to sell it. Uh, it, it depends on the vehicle, of course, but uh, having something inaccurate will genuinely not only throw off your speed, but throw off the odometer reading as well, for better or worse. Um, but, so, to recap, there's two different methods you can do. One is with the milometer, with your measured mile. Uh, you have to make sure everything is accurate in that such. This will give you a number. I will. I can then do some math based on the number here, and I can give you an appropriate ratio. The second method, the harder method, but still reliable, the number of teeth on your gears, the diff ratio, and the rolling circumference of your tire in inches. Uh, follow all those steps and I can build you the right adapter for your needs. The uh, second step to that is, oh, I guess maybe not the second step. So some of the people have asked me, is there an alternative to making an adapter? Yes. You can genuinely get a new gear. However, there's a caveat to that. If doing the math I can deduce, okay, instead of a 16 tooth gear, you need a 24 tooth gear. Just kind of throwing a number out there, right? Just to, just to be able to correct it, you need a, a new number of teeth and a gear to do this. Okay, cool. Um, sometimes, like I said, this isn't a hard, fast, fast rule, Ford or GM or whatnot won't make a gear with the teeth that you need. And a reason for that would be dramatically changing the size of your tires, dramatically changing the diff ratio, uh, incorrect gears on your driven gear, sorry, your drive gear from a transmission shop. I've I've, I've seen it all. So uh, if you can get away with changing just the gear, power to you. Like that's great, right? That's all you're doing is changing one little part. But there are limitations in some cases where the number of teeth that you will actually need uh, is impossible. Uh, one of the other instances would be uh, for some of the GM uh, transmissions. So a lot of these gears will fit in like a housing kind of thing. And those housings are only good enough for a certain range of teeth. So one might be, this housing will fit 15 to 22 teeth kind of thing, right? 
And then if you need one that says, like I said, 24 teeth, okay, so you're replacing the gear as well as the housing, provided there is that gear and that housing available. Like I'm, like I said, I'm throwing out the number 24 just as a number here, right? So don't don't take the number 24 as being unusable because I've seen stuff as high as like 36. So, uh, yeah, those are the different methods and ways to calculate your uh, ratio that your speedometer will need for accuracy. Now, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comment section below. Uh, as always, like and subscribe. And until the next one, have a good one.